Did you ever hear about the time that Tony Perkins offered to buy a homeless guy a burger but wouldn't spring for the fries? Okay, how about the time that Eric Prince helped his elderly neighbor carry out his trash but left the heaviest bags for the neighbor? Okay, one more, one more. What about that one time when the asshole who started the Proud Boys helped an old lady cross the street but got bored three quarters of the way through and gave up on her? Never heard of any of them, huh? I'd be tempted to say we don't tend to write up international headlines about the times when otherwise immoral people who head immoral organizations do somewhat good things half-assedly, but if that was the case, why the fuck would I know about the Pope just now endorsing civil unions? My God, how low is the bar for this guy? Right? How I'd love to have a job where I was graded on the same curve as the fucking Pope. Half the time, the podcast is just like meaningless, random words from 10 feet away from the microphone. The other half, it's me trying to explain the extenuating circumstances around my latest conviction. And yet somehow I'm getting record downloads and all the reviews say, well, at least he's not an ex-Nazi who's directly involved in the child rape cover up. It must be nice. But yeah, Wednesday morning, I wake up to the late breaking news. And by that, I mean pretty goddamn late to be breaking that the Pope tacitly endorsed civil unions for same sex couples unofficially. Right. Like this statement uh, uh, apparently came in a documentary called Francesco about how awesome the guy running the history's largest child rape cabal is. And at some point, the Pope says, quote, homosexuals have a right to be part of the family. They're children of God and have a right to a family. Nobody should be thrown out or be made miserable because of it. Adding, quote, what we have to create is a civil union law. That way they are legally covered, end quote. And that statement has even left wing media outlets praising his moral authority. I, I did think about what a tepid, condescending, backhanded declaration this really is. First of all, having the right to a family is the single most basic goddamn thing you can imagine, right? Like he's exactly one unit of recognition above. They have the right to use all the oxygen in the atmosphere without paying for it. He's saying we shouldn't actively disown them and implied at the end of that sentence is anymore. Right. You and I don't have to make statements like this because nobody assumes we would endorse disowning your brother for being gay. Think about how baseline awful a human you have to be before that would be anybody's default assumption. And, and as if that's not bad enough already, keep in mind that he only means this conditionally. He's certainly not saying they have a right to adopt children. <laughs> Right. He's the head of the organization most directly responsible for inhibiting adoption by same sex couples. So when he says they have a right to a family, there's a huge unspoken asterisk weighing down the back half of that fucking sentence. What's more, he stopped shy of endorsing equality. Right. His big moral revelation is that gay people should have some kind of separate but equal form of marriage. His endorsement is for civil unions. The don't ask, don't tell of the marriage debate. But wait, don't let me oversell it. Right, because it's not like the policy of the Catholic Church has changed. It will no doubt continue to be the single largest contributor in the world to campaigns against marriage equality. Th their official policy remains that Catholic teachings cannot, quote, lead in any way to approval of homosexual behavior or to legal recognition of homosexual unions, end quote. And as if we need to douse the embers of commendability even more at this point, this isn't even new. In 2013, he famously asked his press pool, who am I to judge when asked about LGBTQ relationships? He's flirted with acceptance here and there in the past, but never beyond the boy shucks, I sure do wish I wasn't actively oppressing you level. And yet, despite the fact that his words are too little, too late, impotent, insincere and unexceptional, the Washington Post called his statement a remarkable shift. The New York Times went with extraordinary. Vox dubbed it groundbreaking. Meanwhile, not a goddamn one of them even acknowledged the irony of printing the ethical pronouncements of a man who is still, this very day and hour, harboring child rapists from justice. One would be hard-pressed to find an institution anywhere in the world directly responsible for more evil than the Catholic Church. Right, like I, I'd say impossible if we're counting all of history, but damn hard, even if you restrict yourself to like my lifetime. And yet when the head of that institution makes an off the cuff comment about some of his best friends being gay, the world's media trip over themselves in their rush to write a flattering puff piece about it and slap it on the front fucking page of their websites and papers. 
Of course, we all know where this comes from, right? It's rooted in the same perverse sense of fairness that had mainstream media outlets reporting both sides of the climate change debate until it was too late to solve the problem. It's the same misguided attempt at balance that has to pretend both sides of the political aisle are equally responsible for the vitriolic political climate. It's the same fallacious bullshit that gives equal credence to both the truth and the lie. American media have had to spend an awful lot of time talking about the institutionalized protection and enablement of kid rape. It's crazy newsworthy. When you consider the scale of the problem, both geographically and temporally, it's one of the most evil things ever done in human history. So obviously the media had to talk about it a lot, right? Like it's remained newsworthy for decades now, and there's no sign it's about to drop out of the news cycle. And that leaves a lot of people in the media really uncomfortable. They're always talking about the bad side of Catholicism. So they feel the need to also talk about the good side, even if they have to exaggerate misdirect or outright mislead to get there. And I hate that I have to point this out, but there's no goddamn way to lie your way to the truth.